Hi, welcome. My name is Jeff Kotz, and I'm here today to talk to you uh, about a few fundamental concepts in statistics. Now, if you happen to have this particular text textbook on basic statistics for business and economics, uh, the author is Lind, Marshall, and Wathan, then the PowerPoint slides that you're about to see will seem rather familiar. If you don't, you don't need it. Like I said, I'm just covering some basics. The things that we are going to cover today are five basic things. First of all, the difference between descriptive and inferential statistics. Second, the difference between a sample and a population. Third, the difference between qualitative and quantitative data. Fourth, uh, continuous versus discrete measurement. And lastly, the levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. The first thing we'll talk about is the difference between descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Now, these two words are pretty self-referential in terms of their definition. Uh, descriptive statistics organize, summarize, and present data in an informative way. Basically, they describe what is there. What you see is what you get. The descriptions are straightforward, and they only tell you about what is actually there. So in this first example, we're talking about census. And anytime there's a census, we're going to describe all of the data that you have there, but not try to extend it at all. Uh, second, if there are about 47,000 miles of interstate highway in the United States, uh, and that interstate system represents only 1% of the nation's total roads, but carries 20% of the traffic, these are all things that have been specifically measured about these particular roads. We're not trying to extend it at all and say that other highway systems throughout the world might somehow be different. We're only saying these particular highways, and we're describing it it and only it. The third example, talking about the average person saying, if we collect a bunch of data, a bunch of information, a bunch of little data points, um, the average person spends $103 on Valentine's merchandise, which is an increase from 2009. We're able to say that if we've collected information in 2009 and 2010. But what we're not doing is trying to make an inference about the future. We're not trying to make any sort of prediction uh, estimate, decision, or generalization about a population based on a sample. And we haven't talked about population and sample. We're going to get there in just a second. Because um, the word population and sample are very specific to statistics. A population is the entire set of individuals, objects of interest. Generally, it's the thing that you're trying to generalize to from a sample. We call sample information statistics, we call population information parameters. Your sample statistic is always your best estimate of your population parameter. If you've got no other information to go on, the information you have about a small part of the whole is going to tell you more than no information from the whole. Now, a very important key to the difference between population and sample is always in terms of its definition. Let me give you an example. If I have a iTunes playlist, it is some small part of my entire iTunes library. Now it is a sample of the population. It is a small part sample of the entire population of all songs that I have. It is that because I've defined it as such. It is also a small part of something bigger that playlist is a sample of all songs everywhere. Uh, it's a sample of all sounds that could potentially be made. But what I've said is that this is a playlist from my library. I have defined my population to be my library, and then the sample is part of that. I could also say that my iTunes library is a sample of all music. Uh, I could also say that it is a, my iTunes library is a sample of all sounds everywhere. As you can see, it's this very sort of funnily, nesty sort of thing. One song could be a sample of a playlist population, that playlist could be a sample of a library population, etc. But as long as we're defining the population and then taking some small part of it, that sample is part of that population. The third thing that we're going to talk about 
is the difference between qualitative and quantitative variables. A qualitative or attribute variable is non-numeric. It's a description uh, like gender, religious affiliation, type of automobile, etc. What we're not saying is that it's a certain number uh, or amount of something. For example, a quantitative variable, which sounds like quantity, as qualitative sounds like quality, uh, quantitative is information that's reported numerically. How much money you have, how many minutes are left in class, how many children there are in a family. All of those things are quantitative because they are quantities. Now, if I want to describe the quality of something, I could tell you about its different aspects without necessarily having to count the things about it. Quantitative variables can be classified as either discrete or continuous. Discrete means that there is a countable number. When you learn to count, like the count from Sesame Street, one, two, three, ah, ah, ah. Well, he's the count because he counts. You don't learn to count one, one and a half, two, two and a half. Discrete means that it's uh, a certain individual thing that you can count, particularly because there are gaps between them. Uh, as well, discrete tends to be whole numbers. Continuous, on the other hand, can assume any value in between. Uh, where discrete things we tend to count, we'll oftentimes use specific language of measure for something that is continuous. If I have a book and I want to know how long it is, I could get out a ruler. Now this could be 10 inches long, it could be 9.87. Basically if a decimal or a fraction would make sense, then we can think of it as being continuous. However, if I decided to count the number of pages, I would hope that there wouldn't be 572 and a half pages because that means one of the pages is ripped. Well, it's still a page, it's just a broken page. Counting means discrete. Measuring means continuous. In summary, qualitative and quantitative variables uh, break out like this. So qualitative would be things like brand, uh, marital status, hair color, the types of things that you might be able to actually answer from, let's say, a multiple choice. Is your PC a gateway? Is it a Dell? Are you living in 1998? Sorry. Is your PC a Dell? Is it a Gateway? Is it a Toshiba? Is it a Sony? You could select one of these. Are you married? Are you single? Are you divorced? Uh, are you blonde-headed, brown-headed, black-headed, red-headed, bald-headed? If you could select it multiple choice, we're probably talking about a qualitative variable. Quantitative variables can be broken out into discrete or continuous. If you're counting something, like the number of children, the number of strokes, or the number of televisions that you have, that would be discrete. Continuous, on the other hand, is the type of thing that you would measure, like the length of the spider web off of this spider right here. So, the length of this spider web is about three inches. The number of legs that he has is eight. Countable number of discrete legs, continuous length of well, the last concept that we're going to cover is levels of measurement. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. We're going to go into detail of all of them, but the names that are used to describe all of them actually have a lot of importance. Nominal is like name. So if we're just looking to categorize something and just give it a name, it's nominal. If we're looking to put things in order somehow, before, after, bigger, smaller, greater than, less than. Anytime we can put something in order, it's ordinal. Further, if the order that we can put them in is so specific that the gaps between each of those points, best, less than that, less than that, less than that, worst, let's say, if the gaps between each of those, the intervals between each of those, are exactly the same, then we can say that it is interval level data. Why? Because the intervals are all the same. Lastly, ratio level measurement 
is a lot like interval, uh, except as opposed to, let's say, like a discrete interval one, two, three, four, five scale, we might have something that's more continuous. So as I mentioned before, nominal level data can only be classified or counted. Again, what workers want, this example here suggests that this might be the type of thing you can answer with a multiple choice question. Do they want more money? Do they want better health care? You could put them in number of different categories, and there's no particular order to the labels. Now this is going to be important when we get to chapters two and three and start visualizing, visualizing data with graphs. If you changed the order of that of those labels on the x-axis for nominal level data, it wouldn't make a difference. Like these four could be in any order. They happen to be in descending order because it looks better. But if I flipped them around, it wouldn't make much of a difference. But if we're visualizing data in a histogram, which we'll get to in chapter two, chapter three, uh, then we'll see that there's a bit of difference. Second is ordinal level data. Data classifications have relative values. In other words, you can rank them or you can put them in order. However, you're not really sure how big the gap is between each of those. A classic example might be the NCAA basketball rankings. There's a number one team, currently it's Arizona. There's a number two team, currently it's Syracuse. There's a number three team, uh, I don't know, let's say it's Wichita State. But the gap between one and two, we don't know if that's the same as the gap between two and three. It could be that Arizona is so far the best team ever. And it just so happens that number two is pretty far away from it. But two and three are really close. That, as we get to interval, the gap or interval between them is not constant or unknown. Other scales like this might be things like uh, finance professor rating, superior, good, average, poor, inferior. Is the difference between superior and good the same as the difference between good and average? If that interval is not the same or unknown as it is here, then we might say that this is, well, we should say that this is ordinal level data. Interval level data is a lot like ordinal level data because there is a rank order, but we also know that the gaps between the discrete points for example, 32, 34, 36 inches for bust, or 24, 26, 28 inches for waist. Those particular gaps are all two inches. Those intervals are all the same. As soon as those interval levels are the same, then we can call it interval level data. Ratio level data is the highest level of measurement. It's the most precise. You can do all of the stuff that you could do with uh, interval level data, ordinal level data, even nominal level data, except ratio level data has a couple of particular things. Ratio level data is thought of as being the highest level of measurement. It can do all the things that interval and ordinal can do, uh, but it can actually do more. So the first two things that you see here are uh, somewhat characteristic of interval level. Uh, the third one is not, though. Uh, the zero point is the absence of the characteristic. The zero point is necessary in ratio level data. In other words, do you have to have a zero? In, in interval level data, you, you don't. You could say that those sizes that correspond to those dress sizes, uh, size eight corresponds to 32, 24, 35. Well, I could just as well call that size 6, size 2, size negative 2. I don't know how sizes work, but I don't have to call it 8. There doesn't have to be a 0. I could call that 18 and have no 0 in the size. I don't have to have the 0. That's another way that you can interpret the statement, the 0 point is the absence, or the 0 point is meaningful. The second aspect of number three down there is that the ratio between two numbers is meaningful as well. So let's say that you have $50, congratulations, but I have $100, awesome. I have twice as much money as you. Uh, but if that guy over there has $200, he has twice as much money as I do and four times as much money as you do. Now all of these things, twice as much, four times as much, half, one-fourth, those are all 
ratios. One half, one fourth, one over four. It's a ratio. Ah, ah, ratio level data. On the other hand, if we were to, let's say, compare stars that movies or songs in your iTunes library may be given. Uh, a song that has two stars does have twice as many stars as a song that has one star. Four stars is twice as many as two stars. But those ratios don't preserve the nature of that relationship. In other words, two stars is twice as many as one, but does that mean it's twice as good? Is four stars twice as many as two? Yes, but is it twice as good? Uh, not necessarily. So in sum, if you're going to talk about ratio level data, it's important that the ratios actually have meaning. So if it is actually twice as much numerically, that it's twice as much in the interpretation of those numbers. I know that my $100 is twice as much as your $50, and that means I have twice as much of it. I have twice as much purchasing power. I can't say the same for something like the stars that a movie gets at the movie theater. In conclusion, the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, have a series of defining characteristics that you can see below. We've gone through all of them. And here's a few more examples of things that fall into nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio level measurement. So we've covered today these five things. Descriptive versus inferential statistics. Descriptive is what you see is what you get. An inferential statistic is an inference that you draw from that description. Qualitative versus quantitative talks about quality versus quantity. If you're describing something, generally speaking, if you think that it could be answered with a multiple choice type of question, it could be a qualitative. Uh, characteristic. Quantitative, on the other hand, might ask you to fill out some sort of scale or provide a number yourself. Continuous versus discrete. Well, discrete, again, is something that you count, and continuous means that a fraction or decimal of it would make sense. Lastly, we went over the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio, and how it sort of goes from least to most specific. That's it for the introduction to statistics here. If you want to see more, stay tuned because we'll be covering more information. Again, if you happen to have this textbook, then you'll find the information that I shared during these videos perhaps more useful. You might be able to follow along with the PowerPoint slides if you have them. Uh, outside of that, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.